Hi, I'm Nat Fan. I'm a professional fighter, and this is my life story. And he stayed there. Good position for Nam Fan now. And he throws some big elbows. Now Nam's in the position for some payback. Uh, as a kid growing up, I was always into martial arts. And um, it's something that I was always excited me. I was never into sports like football or basketball or anything like that. I just growing up always watched like martial art movies and I always loved the action and I always wanted to do something with martial arts. I think martial arts teach you discipline, you know, discipline and how to be, you know, pretty much I think a good person. I think for me, growing up, you know, being like I guess second generation, you know, Asian American, we didn't have much um role models growing up like Asian Asians or even Vietnamese. I think uh like in the eighties like we had a lot of like like Hong Kong movies, so in America not much. I think we had back then had Jack Chan, but for me, you know, you know, Jack Chan wasn't Vietnamese. You know, it didn't hit close to home as it as it should have. So um, for me, I think that inspired me more to become a, a fighter. I want to give the kids of the next generation something that I didn't have, or something someone to look up to. I told my mom, I was like, Yeah, mom, I think I'm gonna drop out of school, be a fighter. She's probably thinking, dude, this kid's going to jail. Tới chừng lúc mà Nam nó đi đấu lần đầu tiên thì mấy anh em nó cũng giấu bác. Bác không biết nó đi đâu. Rồi sau thì bác thấy tờ báo người Việt được đăng. Rồi bạn bè gọi, ô, con bà ở trên báo, thế này, thế này, kia. Ô, wow, làm sao trên báo, làm gì trên báo. Thật sự bác không có nghĩ nó phải đi đấu như vậy. bác. Nhưng mà anh này thì từ nhỏ tới lớn là rất là mê. Tức là đi học giỏi chứ bao giờ bỏ ngày nào để đi học hết. Uh, as, a, as, a, as an equation, okay, you go to school, you get a job, you make money to get to your family. But in that equation, one of them is not becoming a fighter. Nhưng mà mình mình biết rằng khi con mình nó thích một cái gì, thì nên để cho nó theo con đường nó thích. Là tại vì đó là cái sở thích của nó. Còn bây giờ mình bắt nó không được, phải đi học kỹ sư, phải đi học bác sĩ, phải đi học này kia. Nhưng mà thật sự những cái đó nhiều khi nó không thích, thì chưa chắc nó đã có những kết kết quả tốt đẹp hơn. Thành ra bác thì thật sự bác là cái 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 người cha mẹ có thể là thông cảm con lắm, theo ý của con nhiều hơn. Mình dạy con nhưng mà bác vẫn theo cái chiều hướng của nó, ý thích của nó. Yeah. Thành ra thì có thấy thì cũng ok. Yeah. À, thật ra thì năm bác đi đó thì bác rời Việt Nam là năm 1977. Bác ở trại cho tới năm 78 mới đi qua Mỹ. Lần khi bác đi đó thì bác còn trẻ lắm, năm đó bác mới là 25 tuổi thôi. Thì lúc đó bác đi là nghĩ tương lai con mình Mình nghĩ tương lai mình, vì lúc đó mình còn trẻ ừ. Mình có thể ra ngoài, mình có thể đi học, mình có thể làm những cái gì mình muốn Cái đó là cái động lực mạnh nhất để bác ra đi This is the reason why I have so much respect for my parents You know, um, you asked me about who did I look up to they, they were my inspiration, they, are, they were my role models, my parents Because they came out of this country, they don't know how to speak any English They can't read or write the language uh, Nó cũng nhiều cái... Uh, có cái vui mà cũng có cái buồn là tại vì khi đặt chân xuống Mỹ thì mình nghĩ rằng à, bây giờ mình đã tới một cái nước tự do nhưng mà cả đêm đó thì, thì bác cũng khóc nhiều là tại vì mình nghĩ à, không biết ngày mai mình sẽ ra sao à, không biết là bây à, giờ mình đang có hai đứa con nhỏ mà mình cũng không biết cái gì hết us as second generation Asian American you know, we have some I think we all you know experience some prejudice and racism but they come over here, they, I'm sure, they experience some real, like, hatred, racism, for reals. And she told me stories where, like, when some of the Vietnamese were just starting to open up the, the stores, the, like, the people would get their, like, bricks thrown out the windows and stuff like that. So, um, some real hatred and stuff like that. And through all that, they're still able to raise a family, take care of my brothers and me, and um, I go to school, and, um, not being able to speak, read, or write in English, and stuff like that, things that, you know, real racism, prejudice, you know, that, to me that's really insp inspiring. For me, I think when you, as a fighter, you, you, you train, 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 you fight, you fight, that's like, that's like the Super Bowl, you know, that's the NFL, of what makes martial arts, when you get there, it's like, dang, I, I made it, I did it, you know. Uh, no matter, for me, how, no matter how well or how well I did or how poor I did, for me, I still fought. I, for me, I'm still so proud of myself that I, I, I got that, like, wow, I got that far. You know, it's something I can tell my kids about.
you know. We have a Nanfan Heart Foundation. It was a free jiu-jitsu class for kids from 5 to 13 years old. Um, anybody, you know, from the community or any, anybody wants want to come train, put the kids in the jiu-jitsu class. It's not a problem. Uh, the whole point is, like, um, to keep kids out of trouble, you know, keep the kids on the mats and off the streets. You know, uh, I think when I was growing up, there was a lot of, um, a lot of gang activity, a lot of gang violence, and a lot of bad things going on. And I don't want... The next generation, our kids, to go through that kind of mess, you know. I think um, if the kids growing up, my age had someone to look up to, or someone to tell them don't do that, or do this, do not do that, or someone to inspire them to do something else, uh, maybe maybe less, you know, Asian brothers shooting each other, or less in jail or prison, you know. Um, so that's why I have the Nathan Heart Foundation to give them that. A, a chance, you know, to do better. <laughs>